Module 12.3, Acoustical Analysis of Speech, Part 2. Formant, Chipmunk Speech, Sampling, and Deep Sea Exploration. What? Okay, so we've spoken about the importance of formants for understanding speech. So let's think about this. Have you ever seen Alvin and the Chipmunks, either the movie or, if you're as old as I am, the original cartoons? All right now, boys, how about a little dinner music? Okay, Dave, what will we sing? How about lamb chop hops? I like the hot potato polka. I want lima bean blues. Don't be silly. We're going to sing the What's for Dessert Jello song. How about the munchkins from The Wizard of Oz? We represent. I think you would agree that chipmunks and munchkins have a unique sound. Their speech is understandable, mostly, but definitely not what we would consider the voice of a normal human. Why is that? First, it helps to know why they sound that way. In the original Alvin and the Chipmunks cartoon series, the voice of the chipmunks was created this way. The lines spoken by a chipmunk were spoken by Ross Bagdasarian, the actor who played Dave Seville. He spoke in a normal voice, but slowly. His voice was recorded and then played back at twice the speed. Okay, Dave, what'll we sing? How about lamb chop hop? I like the hot potato polka. I want lima bean blues. All right now, boys, how about a little dinner music? Okay, Dave, what will we sing? How about lamb chop hop? I like the hot potato polka. I want lima bean blues. The munchkin voices were created in a similar manner. So what is happening acoustically? If the actor had an F0 of 110 hertz, Doubling it would make it 220 hertz. Okay, not a big deal. That's the same as a female F0. But wait a minute. Wouldn't a chipmunk then sound like a female? That's definitely not the case. So something else must be in play here. What else will change if you double the speed? The formant frequencies will also double. Let's go back to the sound file of the word apple. Apple. On the bottom is the spectrogram of the pitch shifted word. Apple. Notice that F0 is twice as high. Now let's take a spectral slice to look at the formants of the vowel A ah in apple. A spectral slice is essentially the envelope of the amplitude of a sound's frequencies at a specific moment in time. So the y-axis is amplitude, and the x-axis is frequency. The left graph is the normal speech, and the right is the sped-up version. The big peaks represent the formant frequencies. Notice that in the second graph, the formants are double the frequency of the original. Now let's look at the spectrogram with the formant lines added. The double-speed version is on the right. F1 is between the normal values of F1 and F2. F2 and F3 are almost the same as the normal F3 and F4. And F5 is so high that it's not even on the graph. If you remember the male-female example, the formant lines for a male and female were not much different. But for a chipmunk, very different. So what this is telling us is that chipmunks don't sound like females because their formants are shifted much higher. That is why they sound unusual. And if you've ever seen the chipmunk movie, you know that sometimes it's hard to understand their speech. That's because of the drastic formant shift. So what does that have to do with sampling and deep sea exploration? Let's talk about sampling first. Sampling is the act of recording a sound and then playing it back, sometimes pitch shifted. 
Most virtual instruments that you hear or use in software samplers work this way. A note is recorded, and then the sampler shifts the pitch of the note up or down to the next pitch. But now you know that as a pitch is shifted, formants shift also. So it turns out that a sampled note only sounds natural for about a 10 to 15% pitch shift. After that, the formants get too far out of whack and the sampled note doesn't sound right. So the better quality sampled instruments use more sampled notes. So they only have to pitch shift notes a little bit, which keeps the sound natural. And finally, deep sea exploration. You may know that when you go down in the ocean, the pressure of the water gets greater the deeper down you go. If you are in a submarine that goes very deep, you need to equalize the pressure inside the sub so that it doesn't get squashed like a pancake. That requires high pressure inside. Well, it turns out that the human body is not very fond of being exposed to high pressure nitrogen, which is one of the main components of air. So deep sea vessels often replace the nitrogen with helium as part of the atmosphere inside the vessel. Sound travels almost three times faster in helium than in air. Ever breathe the helium for a party balloon and then speak? Remembering that with both tubes and Helmholtz resonators, the speed of sound is in the top of the equation, so that as speed of sound increases, so do the resonant frequencies of a tube, a Helmholtz resonator, and therefore the vocal tract. So, if sound is traveling three times faster, formants will be shifted three times higher. This makes speech very hard to understand. To deal with this problem, helium speech unscramblers were designed to make helium speech more intelligible. To review, a sound spectrograph is a device used to measure changes in frequency and amplitude over a period of time. A spectrograph produces a spectrogram. Spectrograms allow us to analyze the acoustic properties of speech. Formants show up as dark bands in a spectrogram. Most vowels will show up as areas with formant bands. Sibilants are sounds that are produced when air rushes past a raised, curved tongue. They usually do not have formant bands and appear on a spectrogram as areas of high frequency content. Plosives are sounds that occur when a buildup of air is released from the mouth. On a spectrogram, a plosive shows up as a vertical band preceded by a band of silence. Prosodic speech refers to the changing of pitch to change meaning. On a spectrogram, it can be seen by changes in pitch. A waveform only gives you information of fundamental frequency and amplitude. A spectrogram provides more information. A spectral slice, or FFT, shows frequency and amplitude information at a single moment in time. Pitch-shifted sounds, helium speech, and chipmunk speech do not sound normal because formants are shifted from their typical frequencies. <laughs>